Jimmy Stewart here, hoping this is finding you all doing well. The video that you're going to watch, hopefully, is a actual setup of this particular guitar. Well, more of a cleaning and setup. It didn't need a whole lot. I did not have to adjust the truss rod, and I did not, believe it or not, have to adjust the bridge. But to get this guitar like you see it now, continue to watch, and you'll see what I ended up doing. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you stick around. Now today I just gonna, I thought I would just uh, record a little bit of this. I, I won't bore you with setting this guitar up, but I wanted to show you a couple of things. Um, as you can see, I have taken the strings off the, the, uh, the Grote or Billy Bob here, uh, and I removed the plastic from the pickups the dual P90s. I also have removed the pick guard. Now here's the pick guard here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to leave it off or on. I would tend to think on this kind of a finish because it's a matte finish. It's not protected with a poly uh, with a poly surface. It might get banged up although I don't strum ridiculously hard but uh, I might put this back on, I haven't decided yet, but for now I'm going to take it off because I am going to protect this body a little bit. And what I mean by that is I'm going to, uh, I'm planning on uh, waxing it up a little bit just to put a little bit of protective layer on here. Because as you can see on this guitar, uh, the pores, the pores in the wood are actually visible and you can feel them. And I'm just afraid... Uh, that without a little bit of protective surface on there, they might it might get uh, it might soak up the humidity more in the summertime and dry out quicker in the wintertime. I'm just going to hit it with some wax, and it'll probably look nicer anyway. And of course, I'm going to restring this with my preferred nines and clean up this fingerboard. And why I mean by clean up this fingerboard, a lot of people wonder why they get black finger on these guitars. Uh, not just this grout or IYV or the Fireflies or any of the more inexpensive guitars that come out of uh, Asia, you know, the Philippines, Indonesia, uh, China. When they do these necks, I, I'm pretty sure they just probably hit it with a buffing wheel and you'll get a lot of junk. Uh, on this one, the frets were very well and nicely done. But again, they don't. These necks come in very dry. They don't get conditioned. They don't get cleaned prior to you getting them. And when you play them, ultimately you'll get that black finger I showed you in my other videos. What I use, folks, is, and again, it is F1. This is Music Nomad F1. This is a cleaner and conditioner. And I'm just going to show you what I do here, and then now we'll move on. But I simply. Put a drop. You don't need a lot, just a drop on each each fret, basically. Okay, and then uh, with a little bit of elbow grease and a used sock, 
You can see this one's been used before. I clean it up. So here's a nice white end. As you can see, it's white. Let's give it a clean here and I'll show you. The stuff that will come off of these. See? That's why you get black finger. Okay, now let's go to another white section here. That's a clean section on my fingertip. Again, I'm just, I'm not scrubbing, scrubbing. I'm bearing down fairly good. Now you can't see where I'm working at now, but I'm just working my way down the neck. And there you go. That's the junk that's on that neck. Uh, let me angle the camera a little bit this way. You can see a little bit more, maybe. And you can see that I'm simply doing some scrubbing. This will actually clean and condition the neck at the same time. And usually these guitars really need it. The necks are always thirsty. You gotta remember they've probably been sitting in a warehouse and since the manufacturing was done, they've been sitting in a warehouse and then they've been in a box and in a container going halfway around the world a couple of times, who knows, you know? But there you go, you can see the stuff I'm getting off of this. Let's grab another nice white section and I'll do these last few frets. And this is just the first time. I do this a couple of times. I'm also going to graphite this nut when I get done cleaning. And I'm just going to polish. The frets on this were very, very good. I'm just going to polish them off a little bit while I have all the strings off to make them nice and smooth. There you go, folks. Here's your black finger. Also the strings. I mean, it comes from the strings, it comes from the frets, it comes from all the leftover junk, the excess dye, everything else that you might find on this fingerboard. And it happens not only to inexpensive inboard guitars, but all, all guitars, really. I mean, if you don't get them cleaned up, and they don't take the time to clean this prior to you receiving it, that's what's going to happen. And let's face it, you know, they're not going to have somebody sitting at a warehouse spending an hour cleaning these necks off one by one by hand before they send these guitars out. That's just not going to happen. So, my suggestion is when you get a new guitar, replace the factory strings. Unless the guitar has been set up for you ahead of time. Replace the factory strings. Clean up those necks. And uh, you'll be truly surprised. Give, the fresh, give your frets a little polish. You'll be truly surprised at how much nicer that guitar will play. Once you've done this. And of course that gives you the chance to get it set up to your specifications as well. And put the, the brand and gauge of strings that you like and you prefer on the, on the guitar. And obviously, that'll make it play that much better as well. Again, I'm going to put Diodario 9s on this. These come shipped with some kind of off-brand 10s, and they're pretty terrible. But that's no different than any other guitar that you usually receive, at least the inexpensive ones anyway. I know a lot of people think the Firebirds and the Ivies and what have you come with Diodarios. They don't. They're, they're imitation Diodarios. They have a color ball on them, but they're not real. Okay. So I'm still getting just a little bit, as you can see. But I'm going to go ahead and stop the video now, and we'll go to the next section of it. I don't want to bore you with all this. I've done this on a couple of different videos to show you how to set up guitars. So, but on this one, I just wanted to show you that even on a different brand, Grout, 
Black Finger is not all inclusive to a Firefly guitar. You get them on other ones. You get them on the Ivies. You get them on this Grote or Grout or Groat or Billy Bob, as I call it. You'll get it. All right. Let me pause here and we'll uh, we'll go to dressing some of these frets a little bit. So here I am just checking the frets for level, why I have the strings off. Just a little. There was just a little rock right in here, but I think that's okay. Just a little tiny bit right there. I believe it's that fret right there. We'll hit that just a little bit harder uh, when we polish the frets here. But overall, very good. No big issues. Right here. And so what I do here, folks, is I use 1,000 grit sandpaper. And I cut it into little pieces like this and you want your fret protectors or your net protectors here and these just simply slide on like this then i go right over this and just polish these frets up i do the same thing if the frets if the fret ends need to be polished or hit with a file or anything like that these are actually very very good there's no need to do that i'm just going to hit them while i have the strings off just to polish them up a little bit and these come in a set the uh thinner one as you go up thin you know up to, to the top of the neck here uh, to get into the frets, they, this one's the one that fits, as you can see here. Obviously, the wider one won't fit up here. I think right about there is the last space you can use that, and then you'd need the little one to hit those last three frets. And again, I just use a little F1, a little, uh, little sandpaper, and I stay right on the... I don't tape up my neck because I stay right on top of the fret. As you'll see here, I just use a small piece. I'm going to take a small piece like that. And then I, as you can see, that doesn't come off the, the edges of the fret protector here. So I'm not scraping the fretboard, I'm scraping the fret. Okay. And I'll show you here on this one. Let's start on 12. Again, I just give it a nice polish. Doesn't take a lot. Smooth it off. It takes any of that grittiness away or if you have any small... And that's it. And you can see on the sandpaper here what occurs. So I'm just going to go down from here so I don't lose my count. And again, I'm not going to film this whole thing. I'm just going to show you what I do. And after about the third or fourth fret, I rip up another piece of sandpaper. So I did these four here, and I'll watch. Now watch the, uh, here's a white piece. Now see, that's just from the frets. Okay, 
So I'll leave this for here and then I'll finish this up and we'll go on the next step. Okay, so I just got done finishing polishing these frets up. I'm just wiping them down a little bit. Getting the gunk off of them. And as you can see, there it is. I'm going to try to find a nice white section here. It's getting getting pretty is a good white section. See? Okay, so I ended up using just, you know, you don't need much uh, of the sandpaper. Again, I cut it into a small sheet. So this is what I ended up using. You can see the difference in, I ended up using that piece. Again, I get about four frets out of each piece. And then that piece. And that piece. And that piece. So usually a section about this big will finish this neck for me. Again, I break this into a few pieces. So, and that's about it. Again, unless you need, I mean, unless your frets are high or you get some other issues, but just polishing them up and getting rid of the grittiness and any little, any little burrs that you might have there. I do this on every guitar I get. So. It's not specific to this particular guitar. This one doesn't have any issue, fret issue problems, but if I'm changing the neck, and or not changing it, if I'm changing the strings and cleaning the neck up, I will do that to every guitar. And every guitar I get, I change the strings on anyway, so. I'm still getting some some black off of it. What I think I will do on this is just give it one more quick hit with the F1. Wipe it all down again and then we'll be ready for giving it some wax. Not the neck, the body. I'm going to wax the body up a little bit. So let's, uh, let's move on to that here shortly here. Again, I'll give it one more. You just need a small drop of the F1 here on each fret. It's usually plenty. A little goes a long way. And this final one should remove the rest of that black off of there. And give the neck a nice, uh, nice conditioning and a little drink. See, I'm still getting it off of there. Getting hard to find a white section of this sock now, just to show you. There's a there's a section clean. Still coming off. It's getting better though. The neck on this is actually very nice. One thing that's really nice on this neck uh, is the inlays. I don't see a ton of excess glue or you know the big cutouts where they they don't quite fit. This is actually done very very nicely. And somebody did take their time on these frets. The frets are well dressed. No sharp edges, no sprout. Level. 
You had one up in here that was just it had a little tiny rock to it. But I hit it with the uh, with the sandpaper, and that should be good enough. I'm sure it'll be fine. I can't see it, and it's just a slight, slight, slight tiny rock. Right here, I think. <clears throat> when I was playing, I never felt it, so I can't feel it playing it. Okay, we're going to move on. Now for this next section here, I'm going to uh, I'm going to test a small spot. We shouldn't have any issue with this. I'm going to use, um, this is Colonnade 845. Some of you might be familiar with this if you, if you have, uh, if you do your cars. Um, this is really good stuff. It's fairly expensive, but uh, it does a really nice job. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just test a small spot. And I'm going to test it right down where that pick guard goes. Because if it doesn't quite work the way I want it to, uh, I can always just throw the pick guard back on there and it'll be fine. But what it should do is help seal this guitar up a little bit without giving it a greasy feel or anything like that. It'll help uh, keep the pores... I think, and again, this stuff you don't need a lot. So I'm going to show you right in this section here. Here's before, and what we'll get with after here. Let's just give it a little. Should not affect the finish at all. As you can see, there's no no finish came off, no blacking or anything like that. But look at the. You should be able to see that. I'm just going to let that set for a couple of seconds here. Okay, so there's there's that now. It's gonna let it set for a little bit, and then I'm gonna buff it down, and that looks like it's gonna do a nice job. Nice buffer, buffing rag here. Yeah, so it looks like <clears throat> some of it sat in there nicely, which is what I wanted it to do. You can feel the roughness here. You might even be able to hear it. Can you hear that? And I think that gives it just enough where it gives it a little bit of coating. Maybe you can see the difference there. Maybe not. Hard to tell. 
once you buff it, buff it off. Doesn't look as wet anymore. But that's what I'm going to do to this guitar, just to help seal that those that porous wood. Again, it, this is just got a matte finish on it. There's no polyurethane or no other type of finish on here. It just it looks like to me like it was the wood and a stain. So I'll leave that at that, and we'll continue on, and uh, we'll pick this back up on the next step. All right, so here now is the front of the guitar. I think that looks pretty, pretty good. Feels nice. All right, so now on to the back. See the top of the back and the untreated bottom of the back so far. Alright, I'll be back after we get this done. Alright, so I've giving it a very light coat of uh, the Carnuba wax. Again, that was just to help it seal a little bit because it is fairly porous. And I'm going to move on to the tuning keys and the nut and then we're going to start stringing okay so now here on these tuning keys like I said uh, when I did the initial review of this I some of them felt a little loose a little sloppy now you can see right here can you hear it there's one that's loose. That one's loose. Can you hear that? Here. That one's loose as well. All right, so I'm just going to, these should be 10 millimeter. I've got a 10 here. And I'm just going to Oh yeah, look at that. Okay. Wow. 
Wow. Again, you don't want these torqued down, but you want them tight. Just hand tight. These were very loose. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, with the pegs. I'm just going to double check all those and tighten those down. Make sure there's no slop in them. And those were a standard flathead, it looks like. Or are they Phillips? Ah, they're Phillips. Okay, so again, I'm just going to line them all up and just give them a tighten. Except I need a smaller head than what I have on here right now. It's smaller. should work. No, it's hard to see what I'm doing here. Let me bring this guitar down a little bit. So all I'm doing is tightening, tightening these tuning pegs, the actual I'm just holding it from turning and tightening that screw up a bit. They feel much better. This one still feels a little loose. There we go. Those feel a lot better. Now whether they'll, they'll hold I mean, it was holding tune anyway. They just felt a little sloppy to me, so we got them done. The other nice thing is that grout went back to that embossed uh, truss rod cover on the newer models. If you recall watching my older videos, the one on the jazz box, <clears throat> they ended up sending me one of these for free because the guitar that I ordered ended up with just a blank... Uh, black plastic cover and uh, I wrote to them and they sent me another one so and now they've gone back to it so maybe I convinced them that it was time to because it's a nice I like the metal truss rod cover I know it's something small but it does set it off nicely okay so we're going to move on to the next part and uh, we'll get some some graphite into that nut okay now for this part I just use a number two lead pencil uh, if you have a mechanical pencil that has the lead that you know that you can bring in and out You can take a piece of that lead and crush it up into a powder and you do the same thing I just find this just as easy. I just take a small jeweler's screwdriver and I just scrape some of that some of that lead out off the lead pencil and into into the slots of the nut here. 
And this, again, I, I do this to all my guitars. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be done. I just do it because that helps, you know, if you have any binding issue. If you might have a little bit of burr or something in that nut slot, you want to clean that out. And then just graphite a little bit. It helps it slide without getting uh, getting bound up in that in the nut slot. Just a little extra precaution. This nut is actually cut very, very well. This is probably the best nut I've seen on any of these inexpensive guitars that have come in. Except for maybe the, the monoprice. The nut on the monoprice uh, actually was very nice, my, my telly. So, but this is well-rounded, it's well-cut. This is a bone nut on here. Now, hopefully you can see that in the camera now. Let me just tilt it. And that's it. So when I go to string, it'll have a little graphite in there to help it out. All right, I'll move on to the next part. I'm not going to bore you with stringing the thing. Uh, hopefully you know how to string a guitar. I just I do things a little specific way. If you're interested in that, take a look at some of my other videos on the... Uh, on the Firefly Les Paul, I do a little demonstration of it, and I also do it on the IYV Brian May copy, so you can check those out. I will show you briefly what I use. I use uh, the Diodario Nickel Wounds. These are the XLs. These are the 9 to uh, 42. Okay, these are 9 to 42s. They're great strings. I think they work wonders. If I run out of these or I can't get them, I'll use Ernie Ball uh, 94 to 2D as well. But normally, I have plenty of these in stock. I buy them by the boxes like this, usually two or three boxes at a time. And then, uh, you know, this is what I use to restring. Diodario, nickel wound, 9 to 42s. And they come in an individual seal package like this. Okay, so let me get this strung and we'll come back. Well, folks, hope you enjoyed that. If you stuck around that long, I do appreciate it. I know it's kind of a long, drawn-out video. However, I did try to condense it as best I could to show you all the different parts of getting this guitar where I wanted it, at least currently anyway, uh, from the waxing of the body. Now, I do this to every guitar that I ever that I buy. I mean, honestly, every guitar that I get, I set it up and I clean it up and I get it playable to where I like it. The only difference on this particular guitar cuz it's the only one that I have that's like this is this matte finish on this guitar, which I really do like. It feels great and it feels a lot better now that I did wax it up a little bit. And uh you can see it really did come out nice. Uh, so there was an extra step that I had to do, but um, it's okay. Because this is a matte finish guitar, I did that extra step and gave it a nice waxing. Try to protect the, uh, the pores of this wood as best as I could without, uh, without damaging the guitar, obviously. So, hope you enjoyed that. And now we're playing like butter. Strings are stretching still a little bit, but they're holding.
Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you're still on the fence about subscribing, please consider doing so. I'd really appreciate it as we grow the channel. And again, uh, I think this is the last round on the groat, groat, grout, great, groot, grote, Billy Bob. This is the last one we're going to do. This is part three. And uh, maybe we'll do a comparison, like I said, later on down the road uh, with the 338 or with the uh, IYV Jazz Box or with even the Grote. Billy Bob. Bob. This is Billy Bob. That's Bob. Maybe we'll do a comparison with those two. Who knows? Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, it's Jimmy Stewart saying take care, stay safe, please stay healthy. And we'll talk to you again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.